to Matt Temple. Hey everyone, good to have you on the call again. Um, this is this uh, being in front of Zoom. I don't know about you, but is uh, it's it's just a different way of life. I find myself after these calls feeling a little bit more drained than uh, a normal conversation. So I think my brain is still adjusting to using technology for us to, to gather and connect. Um, one of the things we wanted to do in the Center for Church Development is leverage our ability to kind of convene and bring folks together um, really to uh, create synergy around ideas, um, sharing best practices, what people are doing that's working, um, what isn't working, I'll, also to be able to share some resources with, with each other and some resources that we're developing to try to help um, support and empower you to uh, minister to your folks during this season that we're in, however long it goes, and um, to share some different ideas as well. And I think just to be able to connect with our peers and other folks who are in the trenches that are uh, trying to figure out this new way of being pastors and doing ministry and providing care and support um, to people. And so uh, we've put out uh, different um, different posts on social media and emails just asking for feedback. And a couple of the things that um, we, we got a lot of feedback from from our last call, as well as on social media and some private messaging is um, some more information on just some technical uh, support in, in terms of how to, how to live stream and different apps that you can use and different um, hardware and software that you can use. And so we wanted to uh, bring some of our practitioners on and let them share a little bit about what they're using and how they're doing it and make those uh, resources available to you. And then the other thing was, um, what do we do about Holy Week? How, how are people um, sort of being, being a, a presence? Um, how, how, do we, how, how are we being the church during um, such an important season? And so uh, we've, we've kind of gathered some ideas around that as well. And um, R Rachel uh, Gilmore from Path One Discipleship Ministries is going to share some of what she's hearing from around the country and different ideas. So I'm excited about that. And then um, also just looking forward to opening up the floor and, and, and hearing from you all what, what your ideas are, what, what, what creativity is coming out. I've been so impressed as I've sat back in, in from Sunday to Sunday, like watching the quality of um, the, the worship experience, like just increased each week, as well as some of the creative ideas that have been coming out. Um, it's been, it's been really, um, it's just been really encouraging to, to see some of the innovation that's been happening. So um, kudos to you all. Uh, the way that we're going to do this, um, this, uh, Zoom call, this webinar is similar to the way we did the last one. So you have the chat box, if you can open that up and, and for the most part, keep your mic muted. That way we don't get a bunch of interference noise. And if you have questions, if you have comments, um, if you could start with your questions in the chat box and then we can sort of begin to address those. Liliana will be following through as you, um, as you put those in there. So we'll be able to, um, we'll be able to see those questions and, and, um, bring them before the different presenters or before the whole group as well. And feel free to, if you have answers to some of the questions in the chat room, feel free to also respond to those. Um, I'm going to ask each of our presenters to just do like a, a, a two minute introduction of themselves. Um, and then um, we'll circle back around and we'll, we'll start with Kyle um, and let him sort of present some, um, some of the, the equipment he's using. Um, we've also created a page uh, on the North Texas Conference website that has um, some resources that you can uh, download for free, some YouTube videos that you can watch that goes even more in depth on some of the stuff that we're, we're going to be talking about uh, this morning. So you'll have those, um, you have those as well. So um, let, let's just start with a brief introduction with from each of our presenters. So Kyle, if you want to, if you want to go first, tell us who you are and, and where you are. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name is Kyle Powell. I'm the associate uh, pastor over at First United Methodist Church in Irving. Uh, I do a bunch of general associate work there, but I'm also the youth director. And when all this kind of kicked off, it gave us an excuse to start live streaming because we were kind of resistant to it, like a lot of people. Uh, and so we've been just trying to get it up, the quality up each week. And uh, I'll kind of be walking through what we've been using and how we've been doing it. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Denise, are you on the call? Hi, can you hear me? Hey, 
Yeah, introduce introduce yourself. You're you're probably the face that no one will know. So you introduce yourself. Hello. Oh, are you there? It looks like she froze. Let's uh, well let's let's move on. Um, let's see. Let's let's move on to Justin. And then when we get Denise back, I'll let her, uh, I'll let her introduce herself. Justin, are you here? I'm here. Um, I'm Justin Miller. I'm uh, the pastor at uh, Trinity Amethyst Church in Wichita Falls. Um, and I, uh, not sure how exactly I got asked to do this, but, uh, somebody told somebody that I am, uh, know about FM transmitters and stuff. And, uh, and so I'm going to be talking today about FM transmitters and, um, we, uh, I know how to use it with our sound system at church and everything else, but I use it for my, uh, Christmas display every year because I actually, uh, uh, send out through, uh, the radio, uh, music to go with my light show. So that's why probably I've uh, been asked to do this. So, uh, I know a little bit about FM transmitters in that respect and how to use those. So I'll let you know about the, when I talk. Cool. And uh, Rachel Gilmore, are you on? Oh, there you are. Hi, Matt. Um, all right. So I am a church planter from the Virginia Conference who moved in July to Nashville to join the Path One Church Planting United Methodist branch of Discipleship Ministries. Um, so I have been reaching out to church planters and pastors around our connection to get innovative ideas for Holy Week, out-of-the-box stuff that can work in this context. So I'm excited to share some resources with you. Awesome. And then Denise, are you back? Technology, gotta love it, right? That's right. <laughs> I'm back. Hi, my name is Denise Diaz Ramos, and I'm up in Chicago with New Story Church, and I'm a little bit of a jack of all trades and plug me in wherever I'm needed. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for everyone um, being here and, and being present. I hope you find this to be valuable and uh, we'll, we'll uh, just dive right in. So Kyle, we'll, we'll start with you. Um, in good. our last webinar, there's, there was a lot of questions coming in about uh, how to live stream, how to live stream mm. even maybe to, to multiple flat platforms, how to use open broadcast software. So can you share with us um, sort of what that is how to use it, what some of the options are for people depending on their budget and um, equipment. Right. Yeah. So if you are looking to start streaming or to up your game a little bit, uh, obviously a lot of us started out using our phones and uh, just streaming live via, you know, your cell phone on a tripod, um, maybe trying to adjust lighting and microphones and stuff like that. Uh, but if you're wanting to take your streaming game up to the next level, uh, one of the things to do would be to use the OBS system or like uh, Matt said, the open broadcast software. Uh, and what this allows you to do is um, kind of like ProPresenter where you set up different scenes and different uh, inputs and outputs, just a way to kind of organize on your computer uh, what information is coming in and then what it's sending out. Um, what this doesn't allow you to do, however, is it doesn't allow us to broadcast to multiple platforms all at the same time. Uh, OBS is only like a single output uh, channel, excuse me, and they only allow for you to send it to Facebook Live or to YouTube or to wherever else you're wanting to send it uh, one at a time. Uh, for that though, you can um, find other uh, subscription-based programs that basically rebroadcast uh, your signal. I'm going to drop some down into the chat really quick. Uh, there's three different ones, uh, Restream, Caster, and Switchboard. Uh, all three of those are subscription based. Like I said, they come in at a very like varying different price ranges and come with all sorts of different um, access to different things, depending on which one you get into. Um, and those will be able to send. So if you wanted to do Facebook Live and then send to YouTube or send to Vimeo or whatever, you can do those things through that uh, as opposed to trying to set up multiple cameras and multiple setups. Uh, another option is if you don't want to spend that, uh, you could very easily just put your phone up and broadcast your phone to Facebook Live uh, and then do your camera or whatever else you're going to be using to one of those secondary sources. And so you'd have two different looking streams, uh, but you would be streaming to two different platforms so you could be reaching more people. 
Um, so as far as uh, the technical side of things goes and pricing, uh, probably the easiest thing to do would be to watch the YouTube video that I made. Uh, it's in that resource page that Matt was talking about. It goes really in depth and it goes like pretty technical and I don't really want to do that and go like way over everybody's head right now. Uh, but what I am happy to do is start asking, uh, having people ask questions and see if I can help answer. Uh, and while questions are coming in, just some quick things that might help uh, if you do decide to use OBS. Uh, one thing would be to not use your church's Wi-Fi. Um, if your church is anything like mine, uh, your Wi-Fi is not the best uh, in certain locations and ours that it's not the best is our sanctuary. And so this is actually a USB to ethernet cable adapter. Uh, and so we plug this right into my laptop, which is what we're running everything off of. Uh, and it allows for us to have a steady uh, stream of internet. Uh, there's no dropping out constantly throughout the service. It's going to keep things running a lot smoother. Uh, something else you might be interested in picking up would be a USB hub, uh, especially if you're running this off of a laptop. Uh, this is a seven port hub, so it puts um, you know, seven USB inputs into this. There are a couple other ones that are smaller that allows for uh, more inputs to be coming into your computer so you're not having to plug and unplug things throughout the service if you need different things. Uh, it just gives you a lot of space. And that also, if you wanted to record that way too, and you had an external hard drive, you can plug that into this and it records great. Uh, and then one of the major issues that we had uh, and that we're still kind of trying to figure out is how to get great audio off the board. Um, I'm actually shooting on a, a Sony mirrorless camera right now. I'm using the same setup that I would for us live streaming at the church. Uh, and plugging our uh, audio jack off the board into my camera was giving us all sorts of crazy feedback. Um, it was, you know, it was peaking and it was like jittery and it was all sorts of gross. Uh, and so we ended up buying uh, this little thing and it is a audio interface uh, that goes into USB. And so over on this side right here, you can see that it's an XLR cable. So that's the same kind of cable, audio cables that come into the board, come off of the board, uh, that are gonna give us the high quality sound that we're used to producing. Uh, and it actually comes back into this interface and then plugs into my computer. So I'm not getting any interference. Uh, the problem that we had this week actually was that the sound was really clear but the volume was way too low coming out of that. So we're gonna have to play with it this week and kind of figure this out because you know we're, we're learning just like y'all are. Um, so let me see if there, are there any questions that I can help answer? Those are just some helpful things that um, might be helpful to pick up before you get onto OBS. Um, I would imagine that, yes, the question was, does the audio interface help with playing video over Zoom? Uh, if you're plugging XLR cables into that, it's going to up your audio quality. Um, you can also invest in microphones. Um, I actually have this one that's like five or six years old. Actually, it's older than that now. It's a little studio mic uh, that my wife got me while we were dating. Uh, and it is great. It's just a USB. It plugs right in. Anything that you can use uh, audio-wise, microphone-wise, that's better than what's plugged into or I guess built into your laptop or maybe it's built into your desktop is going to help. Technology for dummies, OBS is open broadcaster software. Um, so one of the great advantages to OBS streaming directly over Facebook Live is you can actually integrate ProPresenter into OBS. Uh, and so if you are accustomed to putting slides with your worship up or uh, putting up, if you want to start doing more, uh, you know, images or pictures um, in your in your sermons or whatever throughout the throughout the service, uh, you can actually seamlessly transition back and forth between the two of them so that you're giving that same thing that you would be giving in your screens in the sanctuary or the chapel or wherever you're worshiping uh, to the people on Facebook. Uh, it's just a step up. Another simple, simple workaround to that if you wanted to skip OBS altogether is to stream with these things directly through Facebook Live and then have like a TV or another monitor that the people can see. Uh, that's another easy way to do that. Uh, feed from your board. Yes, thank you, Jeffrey. I appreciate that. Jeffrey was just giving me some help on what our problem was. Uh, trying to solve an issue where we can't play a pre-recorded video over Zoom. They can't hear the audio from your laptop. 
Yeah, I'm not sure, Ryan, about how to play a pre-recorded video over Zoom. Um, I too have not spent very much time on Zoom, so I don't know that answer for you. Ah. Ryan, if you check the chat, Jeffrey's answering that question for you. Um, but yeah, if you want more technical, um, technical information or details on how to set up OBS to get ready to stream, uh, or some suggestions on other uh, devices or things that you can pick up to make your streams better, uh, I go through that in detail. Um, I also talk about one of the things you're going to need for OBS or I think pretty much any other broadcaster is you're going to need a video capture card. Uh, let me see if I can pull mine up here without, no, I can't do it without unplugging it. Uh, but it's just a simple, the one that I have is like a USB stick looking thing. Uh, and on one end it plugs into my uh, computer and on the other end it plugs in from my camera. And that way the information coming out of the camera is captured and translated to where the computer can understand it and will actually broadcast that signal as opposed to trying to save it to the computer. So, um, hello, first UMC Rockwall too. I'm not sure who that is, but this is actually the same thing that we're doing right now. We are running, um, the question is they want to run OBS with Scarlet, which is this little thing, um, plugged into the computer, um, which is near the camera. And we're worried about finding a core that would run it back from the middle of the room to the soundboard. So the way that we set this up is I'm, we're not using a big zoom lens. We're actually using a, a shorter lens um, on my camera. And we have it set up right in front of the, um, the chancel area. Uh, and so it's set right in the middle. And I have, I think, a 20-foot HDMI cord that's coming out of my camera. Uh, and we have a, a couple XLR cables connected together coming down to a table, which is right up front. Uh, and so the Scarlet is on a short USB cord. My camera is on a shorter USB cord. Uh, and the one that's running the length of the room is the, uh, the XLR cable strung together. So that was kind of our workaround. Um, I don't know if you have a laptop or a desktop that you can move to a different spot in the room because that might be a better way to do it. And since there's not a whole bunch of people in the sanctuary, it might be a better way to uh, kind of work around that. Awesome. Thanks, Cal. We're going to, we'll, uh, we'll have some more open time for some questions too, but I want to uh, make yep. sure we just keep moving this, moving this along. Also, Absolutely. one of the um, questions that had come up uh, last week was about live streaming to YouTube. And there was a comment that you need a thousand followers to do it. Actually, I did a little research on that. You need a thousand followers only if you're live streaming from a mobile device. If you're live streaming from a webcam, you actually don't need uh, on YouTube, you don't need a thousand followers. So YouTube is uh, definitely an option if you're um, going through like the uh, OBS that Kyle was um, talking about. So I, I wanna uh, move and, and let uh, Denise share a little bit. New Story is a, a church in Chicago um, and they've been really creative in interacting uh, or, or uh, integrating live stream with some pre-recorded. And then last week, they actually were able to um, bring in some other voices of people that weren't in the live stream room. So they were able to sort of add um, participation from people from around the country, like Texas. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I just wanted uh, Denise to share some of the stuff that they're doing, how they've kind of worked together, and in particular, how they're using um, the, the, this particular app that's helping them to do uh, a lot of this um, sort of adding uh, the pre-recorded with the live stream, integrating interviews and, and participation from other folks. So, Denise, you're on. Hi, y'all. Um, oh, I'm originally from Texas, so that's where my little y'all came from. So I envy all of y'all who are in the warmer side of the country. Um, well, Matt asked me to come in and talk to y'all a little bit about what we're doing as a church. Um, like all of y'all, or most of y'all, um we were put into a place that was very unknown um so we've kind of you're muted denise sorry again 
It's my first time on Zoom, actually. <laughs> com forward slash live stream. So you're gonna have to. Okay, so um, and you'll see the progression of what we've done. Um, our service is actually started as a as a podcast. So we've always recorded our services, you know, our sermons, put them on our, our church's website. And so um, two of our individuals from our church decided that they wanted to do a live podcast. Um, and from there, it evolved into bringing in video, which we felt that doing it through Facebook, because you can do it through multiple, you know, send it directly to your website. You can send it directly to YouTube. But Facebook seems to be where most of the people go. And it also allows people to chat just like we are right now, um, share the image, the video to other places. Um, and so it's been kind of, you know, learning trial by error and also, you know, working with what we have versus um, our, our particular situation is that we don't have a church office. Um, so we, we don't have a church building. So um, during the week, pretty much everybody, you know, works from home who does work for the church or does some type of work with the church. So with the COVID-19, we don't have the um, place and equipment to do, you know, live recording at a, you know, church per se. So um, for one of our podcasts, he had microphones and whatnot. And it's this, the first video that is up there was just me with my iPhone. A uh, little disclaimer is that um, I, I do use all um, Mac, iOS. And so the software that I use is called um, Switcher Studio. And I'm gonna show it to you here. I'll, uh, it's an app for, for Mac. Um, I love it. It's been very, very easy. And it also gives it a very polished look especially for those of you who might not be able to go to you know your sanctuary or don't have the audio and video equipment to record a full you know professional broadcast um the, with a switcher studio and you'll see in in my in the live streams especially the last one i and an ipad and the ipad if you i'll show you real quick um what it looks like so i don't know if you see um right here so you, when you're recording with Switcher Studio, it, I've done pre-recorded countdowns on iMovie, and you can um, find some of these online and download. And um, from there, you can I've uploaded songs of people at our church. And so um, our our stay-at-home, um, you know, laws in Chicago are a little bit stricter. Um, so we can't, we can't, um, get more, you know, than two, three persons in our kind of household that we do. Just leaders record, and then I'll go online on iMovie and add the lyrics. But you can also do multiple um, displays. And when you do multiple displays, you can even it or in screen picture right here. So it's um it's it's worked really well with us. Also, just you know, making more of a polished branding look using different websites for this, such as Canva. Um, I don't know if some of y'all have used Canva, it's a great website. Um, there's a free version and there's a, also like a $10 version that just gives you more flexibility and, and um, just easy drag on things. So for a person like me, I'm a mom of three. I'm, I don't do this professionally. Um, it just helps to have very simple things that people can just kind of drag, put in, and, you know, and especially if you don't have, you know, the background of you know working with audio and video equipment um this last podcast that we did do um uh, because our one of our friends who um jack who does the video and audio or i mean the audio he um actually integrated his equipment into my phone to be able to get a clearer sound um 
it does sound better. You get that, you know, rich microphone output, but if you can't, if you don't have that, I feel like even just using, you know, your phones on it sounds well, you know, two iPhones, one on, one on you, one maybe on whatever you're reading and use an iPad to, you know, switch between um, cameras and just gives that little, you know, seamless flow of it. Um, so those are some of the things that allowing us to questions <laughs> or Matt do you have any questions no we, well we lost we lost you there on that on that on your last little uh on your last little thing but you're so to, with with um with switcher studios then like you're able to you get the pre-recorded from your um worship leader and then do you go in and put like the words you can scroll the words on it so that it has and it has like different effects you can put on it and is it are you using switcher to do all that or are you using like powerpoint no. and bringing that in no i'm using imovie um okay. again I, because i do use mac um apple's you know software um imovie is really great i just get their video put it in there and then just put the lyrics as they go but you can um, do like a pre another pre-recorded video of just the lyrics. Um, you can do slides on the Switcher app um, and put them, like I said, um, you know, picture in, in picture, uh, where you can have the person um, be singing it and then have the lyrics. For me, it's just easier to just sit down and. So when I, I'm asking, I'd be warm. Oh, we lost you. <laughs> if if uh, if y'all want to see sort of how that switcher app works and what it, what it looks like and how it integrates, it's it's a it's it's a really accessible way, um, not very expensive. To if you're using an iPhone and an iPad, especially um, to integrate they did interviews so they were able to like live feed me into their live feed um they also did some um like i said with the worship and and having the the words and, and lyrics right there on the screen so if you go to my facebook page i shared um their live stream from last week on my facebook page otherwise uh, i think denise put the um live stream uh web website there for new story chicago.com as well so you can go on and, and see that there uh, as well so it's pretty easy to use so like if, you, if you're a novice and you're, you're looking for something that um, is is intuitive and, and, and simple then uh, switcher studio is a great place to start um, it doesn't require a ton of uh, technical expertise um, so let's um, let, let's shift for now and then if Denise gets back on and anyone has some uh, questions we can uh, we can direct those towards her when she gets back but Justin um, I've seen online some really fun uh, creative uh, actually I have a friend in Indianapolis that did a drive-in sort of movie theater style church service last Sunday using FM transmitter technology we call it technology it's 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 kind of a, a throwback technology i guess but um mm -hmm. yeah sh share with us I, I think you've used it like at christmas with christmas lights where cars can pull up and and they hear right. the music with your lights um but share with us sort of how that works and how maybe you would envision that sort of integrating into um what what we're doing as churches and how how we could um use that as as a way of reaching our people yeah so definitely um you can there's tons of different FM transmitters out there. Um, the, there's short range and there's long range. Uh, to for uh, according to law, we uh, you can uh, broadcast for free up to 200 feet and not have any problem uh, with FCC uh, regulations or anything. And so a lot of them are that sell out there. Long range will do two 200 to 300 feet. Mine can get between that. Like I can go about probably about five houses down from my house and still pick it up, pick up the music and stuff uh, on either side of, of my house. Um, so depending on how you have your system set up at church, 
um, you can easily plug in uh, your FM transmitter into whether it be a computer because you can use uh, the way you plug it in is just using a regular aux cord. Um, so just a three and a half millimeter aux cord um, that you plug into the FM transmitter to be able uh, to broadcast it. So it's really easy to use. It's not anything that's complicated. Um, so this is, this is uh, the transmitter that I have. It kind of looks like this. Uh, you, can't, you can't get this specific brand on Amazon. I got this one, I think on Amazon, about $100 what it costs. Uh, they do have another one and I'll post it in, in just a minute, uh, what you can look for on Amazon. But you, if you wanna look for one, just type in long range FM transmitter. Um, and I'll, like I said, I'll share that. But it's pretty easy. All you do is turn it on. You uh, just tune to the station that you want to broadcast to. So it's not very strong. So you're gonna have to pick definitely a station that is uh, not, uh, that doesn't have any uh, broadcasting in your area um, because it's it these are meant to not interfere with other uh, broadcasting systems in your area so if you have a um, if there's one broadcasting pick a station that doesn't have any uh, frequency sent to it um, and so you just uh, dial it in like here I use uh, I think it's uh, 90 uh, 98.1 or something like that. Uh, and then you just, this one, let's see. Yeah, so you just plug your audio here. And this even allows you to uh, plug in a, like a mic directly into it using an aux cord. Um, but you can uh, plug in uh, your, just your regular aux cord. Uh, and then this is the volume that you can set and everything. Uh, my suggestion too is, is you want the volume to be lower on this and higher on your sound system or whatever you're broadcasting from. Uh, because whenever you have this up louder, it's going to be a lot of, uh, it won't come up very clear. I'll just say that. So whenever I do my uh, thing, I make sure that I have my computer up really loud and then I have this turned down so it doesn't uh, feedback kind of like uh, some of your speaker systems that have <clears throat> power volume and stuff on them. So uh, what does it say is there's different ways that you can do this. So say that you have a sound system. So our sound system allows us to have uh, the RCA uh, jacks, the red, white uh, cables uh, that can come out of it and then project sound. So that's how we're doing our system right now uh, because we use a camcorder and then bring it in to a a converter and then have from the sound system to that converts from the RCA down to an aux cord and goes into that. And so you could do that into this, uh, but if your system doesn't allow for that, you can uh, just uh, bring a computer up that you are uh, broadcasting to on Facebook and then hook your aux cord up that way through your headphone jack and into there. And so it'll broadcast that way if you wanna do that. Uh, so there's a lot of different options that you can use with, with this. But this one is, uh, all these are uh, on the back, there's an FCI, FCC ID and everything. So there are legal to use these, even though there's some websites that say, no, you can't, but it's just up to 200 feet that you can um, use these legally without having any problem. But I think with everything going on right now, I don't think you're gonna have a problem with that anyway, of any sort. Um, but um, that uh, is, uh, the, they're really easy to use, uh, just, uh, plug in to the jack, pick your station, and then go. And it's not difficult at all. Um, so that's kind of what, um, it, like I said, I use it every year. I've used it for five years now or so uh, with my Christmas display and stuff, and we can easily hook it up. We haven't, uh, at our church, haven't decided to do a parking lot because we're at shelter in place here anyway. Um, but um, if we do, that may be something that we uh, think about doing. Um, but I'll post on here, um, there, most of them are around a hundred dollars. Uh, so they're not very expensive and depending on where you order them from about a week or so it takes to get it in. So, uh, do you have any questions about that? Yeah, there's question. been some comments about the shelter in place and, and definitely if your county has a shelter in place, um, mm -hmm. uh, stipulation, you, you don't want to be doing drive-in gatherings, but there are some other ways. Uh, that you could utilize this technology still um, without doing uh, a, a large gathering. And um, yeah. once 
uh, once once Rachel sort of presents some of the ideas that she's uh, hearing about, we we can um, we'll go to even like Stacy Piacun in the way they're integrating some of the stations of the cross in uh, through yard signs and doing some um, some drive by. I think you could integrate some prayer and reflection using technology like this where cars drive up much like they're looking at Christmas lights, but instead mm -hmm. they're, they're doing, you know, prayer and reflection as a family or whatever. So, um, right. yeah. Any other, any other questions uh, for Justin? I have a, one, one quick question. Um, he mentioned about the, uh, the law. Uh, is there a particular law uh, concerning the amount of Watts use with these transmitters because I've heard that you know the fines up to ten thousand dollars if you exceed a certain amount of watts on these things right so most of these that you get from if you get one like this or uh, even smaller that goes smaller range the higher the wattage is the further range you're gonna get so if you get ones that just have like an antenna like this you're not gonna you're not gonna have any problem they're the ones that have the higher wattages are the ones that have bigger antennas. So the bigger antenna, the further range you're gonna have. So just to give you a little, uh, that'll help you out. How can we help churches that may wanna use these not know that as novice? And my understanding is like Amazon, they're not telling you this information. And churches going out buying this kind of equipment and not knowing the law and find themselves in a deeper hole because they're breaks of laws. Yeah, so I, that's why I was going to share in just a minute. I'm going to share uh, just a link of one certain one that is okay to use. Uh, and uh, but I I wouldn't just go out and buy any FM transmitter. Uh, but if you stick under $100, you're probably going to be okay uh, and not worry about being too high in wattage because the ones that go even higher in wattage, they're going you're talking about $250 on up, uh, depending on the cost of them. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, let's see, Matt, could you please address the difference in audio quality between your feed and Justin's? Why is his so much clearer? <laughs> Do I have better I have no internet? idea. I <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because I'm using Apple uh, headphones, I don't know. Maybe my microphone is not as good in them. <laughs> Hang on, just a second, guys. All right. Well, um, Rachel Gilmore works with Discipleship Ministries and uh, is doing some excellent work and uh, has sort of the ability to scan the whole country and what people are doing and sort of her contacts in different places. And so Rachel, um, take a little bit of time and just share with us, what are some ideas that you're, that you're seeing for Holy Week in how people are engaging their congregation, their community. And then also we've partnered with you to develop um, with uh, Scott Erickson, the Stations of the Cross and some um, resources there. So you can walk us through some of that as well, if you would. Sure. Um, so I, I don't know about all of you, but I would love to have as many ideas as possible so you can find one that would work for each of the um, days of Holy Week. So let me share my screen here. <laughs> can you guys see that with Holy Week ideas? Yep. I'm just gonna fly through it all. So the first main question that you need to think about is your context, right? What is my context that determines the why, the medium that you use for each of your services? So if you wanna reach as many people as possible, then you wanna use multiple platforms so people can share it and access it. But if you wanna engage people on a personal level and help them feel connected, a lot of planters and pastors throughout the connection are using Zoom rooms because just seeing all the faces and having a few minutes of chaotic talk has been really meaningful um, to lots of folks. And give, or there are times you wanna give people the space to worship when they need it the most and just provide at home resources for them to use, you know, individually or as a family when they have like the emotional space to handle it, depending on the anxiety level of your context. Okay, so for Palm Sunday, ideas I'm hearing around the connection are a palm parade, uh, if it can be done safely, where you line up cars and you drive through neighborhoods. Uh, and you have people grab a plant from home and wave it outside their window. Other churches are offering online uh, cutouts. Uh, Illustrated Ministries has a free one that you can download. Or other people are saying, use the palms of your hand and do a Palm Sunday parade. Um, 
there's also Susan from Upper New York talked about how Hosanna means, um, you know, save us. And so they're doing like a poem protest where they write down on um, pieces of paper what they need to be saved from if it's unemployment or um, illness or anxiety and isolation. And they're all going to hold those up online so they can do it virtually. Or you could have them put all their signs out in front of the church practicing social distancing as a way of showing what people's needs are where they feel they need to be saved on Palm Sunday. You can use virtual choirs or Zoom room choirs that you can post up on social media. Virtual choirs are really time uh, they intensive, so make sure that you prepare 80 to 100 hours of editing if that's something you want to do. But there is a, a Zoom link that I can send you or a YouTube link that with a Zoom call that talks you through that process if you're interested. Um, and then Palm Sunday at home stations where you find some dice and some cloth you can tear and other things uh, that you can use. I have a template that I can provide that you can adapt for folks to do at home. When it comes to Monday Thursday, an idea that's going around is uh, not to focus on Tenebrae necessarily because it is a heavy, hard time, but to look at um, the new commandment, love one another. So look at ways that you can love people in your community. So I've listed some here. I can send this PowerPoint on to Matt. Um, and so you, you challenge your church to live out that command to love one another uh, and post on social media using your church hashtag, maybe the hashtags love one another or buy your love, and then compile all of them if you're techno savvy as a church and have um, have that be shown on Monday, Thursday, how you're reaching out and loving your community or tell the local news station um, or others about what you're doing so that we bring hope and inspiration on Monday, Thursday. Uh, if you want to do it at home, there's uh, Rachel Wallace, who's a church planter in uh, Kentucky. Uh, I gave this to Matt. She's developed an individual and family Monday, Thursday at home with five stations. People could always Zoom together. There's a foot washing liturgy on Discipleship Ministries webpage that could easily be adapted to use at home. Buildfaith.org has a stripping the table at home service so that, um, you know, the kids Easter Sunday can actually see the difference around them as you strip the table together. And then Worship Design Studio has a free downloadable comfort food love feast uh, that's available via Zoom for you to use as well. So because I'm sharing my screen, I can't see any of the chat stuff come up. So if Matt, if there, if I need to pause for a question as I'm going, just let me know. Otherwise, I'll keep flying through. Okay. Good Friday options. Uh, Nadia Boltz Weber, church planter out in Colorado, Lutheran, um, would every year have people gather at a place where there's been an act of senseless violence or tragedy. So folks are reinterpreting that and gathering at a place in the community where there has been pain or a loss of innocence. And you could just put a cross there and have people stop by throughout Good Friday to pray. You could offer some type of guided meditation on your app or your website, but they would do it on their own time. Um, then Scott Erickson, Stations in the Street. I'm gonna dive into that in a minute. There are some Good Friday monologues that I gave Matt that can be read uh, or, and live streamed or used on Zoom with people posting their reactions, participating at home. Uh, or I was talking with some Counselors yesterday who said Good Friday is really an opportunity to help people name all the things they're grieving and the ways they might feel abandoned or forsaken at this time. Uh, and that can bring some healing and prepare them for Easter Sunday. Uh, so Scott Erickson, great artist. And uh, most of this work is Scott's and the response, but he has 12 images, 12 stations of the cross. Here's one of them. So the resource that North Texas has that they've contracted with Scott for, um, you get all these images and then for each one, there's a verse. So this is Jesus uh, tempted praying in the garden. So there's a verse that goes with it, a meditation, and then a call to action for each of the 12 stations. So it's a free downloadable resource. Some of the other images are here, Jesus being betrayed for the 30 pieces of silver, Jesus condemned by the Pharisees who say, you're not my king, uh, Jesus mocked, S Jesus is given his cross to carry. So anyways, all the scriptures, meditations, actions, you can download and adapt for your context, however you wanna use them online, people doing them in their homes. Um, other versions have said, you can hide the stations of the cross around that house in lieu of like an egg hunt um, and have people find them and put them in order and then do them together as a family. Uh, Discipleship Ministries is coming up with like an online activity for kids, a virtual egg hunt or something. As soon as that's released, I'll send that to Matt as well. Uh, in terms of Easter Sunday, you can consider adjusting the time of worship if you do live stream because we're hearing that uh, Facebook might be so inundated that there would be 
glitches with sound quality and whatnot. So some churches are already notifying their congregations, hey, we're gonna meet at 6 a.m. or 4 p.m. on Easter Sunday so that they have more bandwidth and can reach more people. I don't know if you've heard about it, but it's growing by like a thousand people a day. It's a Facebook group called the Quarantined Easter Celebration, which is a challenge across all denominations, all faith groups to sit, well, not faith groups necessarily, but denominations that at 8 a.m. Easter Sunday, you all sing Christ is Risen, wherever you are, whatever your time zone, and post that to social media as a way of becoming one um, on Easter Sunday. You could have people post family pictures in their Easter best if it's pajamas or dresses. Uh, Sparkhouse has a flat Jesus that you can download for free and have your neighbors put them all around so folks can go out Easter Sunday and try to find Jesus in their neighborhood. Um, and it's not a blonde haired blue eyed Jesus, which I personally appreciate. Uh, you could have people post signs of life or hope using one common hashtag on Instagram or come up with your own filter, uh, or have them post on Facebook and combine them all together to say this is where our community is seeing life and hope on Easter Sunday. Or you could have people write a note to God about how they feel this Easter and mail it to the church and then you mail it back to them, either when the shelter in place ends, when Advent begins to think about where they are now and what's happened, or uh, Lent next year, just as a time for reflection and going deeper in their faith. And then there is a church planter up in the Dakotas who is doing Easter Sunday drive-by stations. So when I get more information about how he's developing that and what that entails, I'll share it with Matt as well. There we go, we're done. Any questions? Awesome. Um, Stacy Piacun, would you can you share with us a little bit about what uh, Melissa is doing and how you're using this resource? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, Matt, I'm not sure. Oh, I can share the screen. All right, let's see. All right, so one of the things we're going to do using Scott Erickson's picture is I actually went on Office Depot today and ordered a bunch of yard signs for delivery. So we sort of took these pictures and blew them up into an 18 by 24 yard sign. And we're going to encourage people, we're, we're under stay home guidelines, not shelter in place in Collin County. So we're gonna encourage people to do a stay in your car, Stations of the Cross, where we tell them which streets to go to. They do kind of a little hunt and we place these signs in between the sidewalk and the curb. So they're not something you could see necessarily if you were walking down the sidewalk so that we're encouraging people to actually stay in their cars. We talked today about uh, putting these up. We wanna put them up actually more throughout the week versus just on Friday, because this is so new for folks. We think it'll take them a little while to get used to what they're doing. So we're gonna talk about it Sunday. We're gonna put them up on Monday and let them stay up Monday through Friday. And then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and even Sunday morning, we're gonna do really simple Facebook Facebook Live kind of monologue services where we read texts out of John. We use Zoom webinar for that so that people can see and interact with that and we can use other mediums. We can even do that um, to people in different locations by changing off who's the panelist. So we're going to go uh, have a morning watch on Easter Sunday at, at sunrise um, before we do our regular worship services. So we're trying to keep things simple, but encouraging people to maybe enjoy what might be nicer weather next week um, with some stay in your car stations of the cross using this artwork. Excellent. Any, um, does anyone have questions for uh, Stacy or Rachel about um, any of these ideas? I would love to get the PowerPoint that Rachel did. James Friday. So I'll email it right to you, James. Thank you. Awesome. For those of you that don't know James, if you're from North Texas, James is the developer in South Carolina. Uh, Rachel and I spent some time with them uh, few months ago doing some leadership seminar stuff and uh, just really appreciate James's leadership and it's great to have you on the call James. Anyone else any other uh, questions or thoughts? Um, so we're getting some action on the PowerPoint Rachel if you want to email that to me um, and then I will, uh, I will have that put on our website under Holy Week uh, resources so that anyone who, wants, um, anyone who wants that can have it. Yep, 
I just emailed it to you. Perfect. Um, And if you are, I'm seeing the question about doing the drive-by stations of the cross, and it can, that's why there's an instruction sheet, I think, that goes with the Scott Erickson images that says, this is what you would do at home, or if you have a shelter in place and you want to leave the house, you can put the images up throughout your apartment building or neighborhood um, and have people just walk and see them practice social distancing. Do a map similar to what Stacy said, but within everybody's community. So I know Tennessee is not in shelter in place yet, but my husband's already reached out to our neighborhood and will be participating in it. Awesome. So I had a question if, uh, and this may be getting beyond where we are right now, but specific ideas that people have of, of uh, sharing Palm Sunday um, worship ideas and Easter Sunday. I know we've gotten uh, some example of ideas, but I'm wondering if we'll have a dialogue among colleagues of some of the things. Um, for example, uh, an idea for Palm Sunday, I think, uh, I'm not sure if uh, uh, Diane Dietz is on the, on the line, but um, she mentioned some creative ways of having kids maybe coloring uh, uh, palm branches and, and having them in the air, or people going out to their garden and picking up something that doesn't have to be a palm, but some way of sharing in that. Is that some dialogue that we can entertain? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So Wally, I'll show you what we're doing in Melissa. We encourage families to make copies of handprints and even to mail those back and forth. And we talked about how the body of Christ connects us all. We talked about glue and staples as the way in which connects that. And so we're making palm branches out of actual palm handprints. Oh, yeah. that's cool. <laughs> Thank you. Other ideas of what people are doing? First Paris is having people send in photos or videos of their family members having their own little palm parade and then we'll um, piece them together for the beginning of service. Yeah, uh, First Saxe is doing something similar to that, like having folks do that in their homes. And I'm not really exactly sure what our children's director is, what all she's going to do with them, but I know that they're going to be incorporated in some way um, into the service. Yeah, First Rowlett is doing that as well. The children are making palm branches at home out of construction paper or other things and uh, sending in videos, submitting videos of them parading with their families through the house. Other ideas on Palm Sunday? If not, we'll move to Monday Thursday. Well, on, on Monday Thursday, uh, again, there was been some shared about doing some shared grieving uh, uh, on that, and as well as Good Friday. And the bishop tomorrow night at 7 p.m. is going to be addressing um, Holy Communion or Agape Meal or Love Feast. And, and how that can be done. There's a lot of um, conversation going on among theologians and, and bishops and such about, about this practice. And so tomorrow night at seven, the bishop will be doing, will be addressing that and that'll be recorded and posted. And so we should have greater clarity on, uh, on that. I've posted a number of articles on the Facebook page, on the clergy Facebook page. and. Um, um, about just how some people are thinking about it to help you and your congregation be thinking about it as we move into that. So um, is there a conversation about uh, Maundy Thursday apart from, uh, apart from the online Holy Communion debate? Yeah, um, we, at, at First Saxe, we're planning, well, we're experimenting with something that we haven't done before, and that is, uh, well, we've done everything live so far, but there's, we're kind of wanted to do a, a partly pre-recorded and partly live um, uh, service. We want to, we want to do Stations of the Cross, but we want to, like, we're trying to get congregation members each to record sort of the, you know, scripture and reflection and prayer for each of the stations in their homes to send those in, and we want to edit that into a 
into like a, um, an experience. And we want to, and uh, our youth director, Kendall York, she had this, I think, brilliant idea to uh, frame, frame, like do stations, but frame it in the context of the Last Supper, you know, and so have the sense of like, this is what's, this is what's coming next. This is what is on Jesus's mind. This is what is, you know, and sort of a flashback, flash forward kind of thing. So have it, have it be sort of about the Last Supper and what's, and what's to come. And so what the meaning uh, what the kind of meaning that comes into the Last Supper because of that. So we want to make a video doing that. And then we want to invite the congregation to a big, great big, Zoom, as many as we can get, big Zoom call. Uh, after they would watch that, like we would invite them to watch it at a certain time and then log on at, let's say, eight o'clock for Holy Communion. Or if Bishop McKee changes his mind and says he doesn't want us to do that, then whatever else, so some other communal experience together um, uh, on Zoom. So a little bit of pre-recorded stations, a little bit of, uh, of Zoom interaction. Very cool. Others? And there are some uh, in the chat going on. The bishop has not, whether the bishop has made a decision or not, I, I do not know, but the bishop has not formally announced a decision on online Holy Communion. Worship Design Studio with Marsha McPhee also has a free resource out um, for Monday, Thursday, and it has six reading components. And so we're still brainstorming ideas, um, but that's one of the ideas on the table. Uh, the resource is called out. Michelle, can you put that, find that link and put it in the chat yeah. for us? Thanks. Will do. Any others before we move to Good Friday? Or we'll just, uh, Monday, Thursday, or Good Friday at this point. Uh, the liturgy of washing of the hands rather than the washing of the feet at Fellowship UMC. You want to share what that is, Edlin? Yeah, just, uh, you know, we're kind of in a different time. Um, talk with uh, Ron about it a little bit this morning, but just uh, what wasn't my original idea, someone had shared and I was like, that would be very neat. Uh, only for this unique time that we're in, of course, it's not something you'd be doing going on, but uh, right now we're planning to do communion and washing of, washing of hands. So a lot of people have talked about, you know, you wash your hands and say the Lord's Prayer and that's the right amount of time. So has not been written yet, but we're going to, because we take Monday, our Monday, Thursday service tomorrow. So that's something I just wanted to share. So will you be washing someone else's hands or just washing your own hands? Uh, the thought would be, you know, if you got families that they might be, you know, kind of washing in a common space there. Or if you're alone, you know, yeah, you're wash, washing your hands individually. Edlund, if you create a resource that you send out to your church on um, on that, will you send that to us and I can put it on our uh, Holy Week page as a resource sure. people can download? Thanks. Yes. Thanks for that. Other ideas that people are hearing or thinking about when it comes to Monday, Thursday, or Good Friday? Well, the Lord has risen indeed, uh, will be sung at 8 a.m. Uh, and posted online, but other Resurrection Day Easter ideas that you have. People are talking about, uh, you know, two Easter's this year both the uh, online Easter celebration on the actual date and a in-person Resurrection Day celebration when we, uh, when the bands are lifted and we're able to join in together. And so I've heard a lot of people talking about uh, two Easter's this year uh, because we believe every Sunday is Easter Sunday, a resurrection celebration. So people are talking about doing a big Easter celebration when, when they're able to congregate back as well as online. So, but we'll start off uh, ideas that people are having to make uh, Easter Sunday special. Uh, 
Oh, and we just have the benefit that we have some footage from last year's Easter. And so for Palm Processional and then also for Easter, we're going to do Christ the Lord is Risen Today, do everything else live, and then do the Hallelujah Chorus at the end. But the Christ the Lord is Risen and the Hallelujah Chorus will be from last year. Nice. Others? I'd also be interested just to throw another question into that um, and how you're engaging children. Um, you know, we've, we've talked a lot about sort of the live stream and the worship experience, but um, what, what are some ways in, in particular for Easter, but in others, uh, other ways as well, how you're um, integrating our, our children into the worship experience? We're, we're doing live, or we're going to do our best to do a drive-in church on Easter Sunday, um, weather permitting, FM transmitter permitting, and um, we're doing drive-in church this week, weather permitting as well, and our congregation uh, will receive bags of communion that will take together communion there sitting in their cars, um, depending on the bishop's conversation tomorrow night. So <clears throat> the plan is to take those same bags um, I ordered enough of them, and we will put together an Easter bag for um, our children that come to our drive-in church. I have three. I have a family with seven kids in the congregation. There's another family with three. Um, so I expect in our small community that we'll probably have um, at least 65 people that gather, and they'll bring their kids just like a normal Sunday. They just have to stay in their car for the drive-in uh, church. That's the attempt. So we're giving them bags of, of the empty tomb stuff, um, little crosses, just little things that they would get, kind of like some vacation Bible school toys and things like that. So that's what we're doing. Um, I don't know. I, I hope it all works out. We're praying for no rain on Sunday and a good Easter Sunday as well. So just my thoughts. Our children's minister has put together a virtual Easter egg hunt where it's going to be like an Easter egg hunt, but having children find different colors around their communities and take pictures and send those and different words that express joy or happiness and have them take pictures of those. And so she's gonna have them send those to her throughout the day so that um, she's able to sort of engage with them throughout that time period about that. We also continue to have children's moment every week where she is a part of the worship experience and talks directly to the children. I think in our community, a, a lot goes around the kids being able to parade in their Easter vest. Um, so uh, hoping to get some photographs of that. Uh, again, going back to Diane Dietz, she had thought the idea of maybe uh, giving a craft for the kids to make their own Easter bonnet, take their pictures and be able to share that uh, in a way. So um, that's kind of gotten my creative juices going uh, in that area, but some way for the kids to do something and prepare and then be able to show it uh, online uh, would be the best. Well, I'll throw out another idea. In North Georgia, there are churches doing uh, You've Been Egged activity where they put a sign on someone's front door saying, we hid 12 eggs in your yard, have fun finding them. They're empty like the tomb as a way of reaching out to families in the church. So I know that there are conflicting responses across the connection about offering goodie bags or eggs or anything that is distributed, even the little communion packets on Easter Sunday where they can just drive in and get it because again, if one person distributing it has coronavirus, now your church is known for getting all the families in town sick. So you gotta just kind of weigh the danger of that, I guess. But. Uh, Greenland Hills is, um, they've been having church members read, um, this isn't for Easter Sunday or worship, but they've been having various church members read uh, bedtime stories. So it's been a great way for them to engage various members of their congregation and connect them with one another as well as minister to the children. Freddie Orr asked, um, is there any um, 
uh, asking for some additional resources and thoughts and ideas for smaller churches. Anyone have any suggestions about that? I know many of these ideas have been shared by smaller churches. He lifted that question. Owen, can I chime in just a second on that question? Yeah, please. It was yours. And, and the reason why I'm asking the question from everything I'm hearing sitting here and the number of calls that I've been on, a number of you guys have, have young folks who are very talented with this. I'm listening at, at, and seeing these young ones who are talking about it and stuff. It just does not fly with my church. I do not have anybody that has that type of expertise and stuff. So we're doing good to be able to get an iPhone set up and being able to transmit it live and being able to do some of the other things that you're talking about. Uh, I just, just the other day, finally got a Zoom account set up. So I'm still waiting in the water on this and, and trying to learn how to, to extend invitations for people to be in a Zoom meeting. So I, I'm, some of our smaller churches need just like some basic stuff just to be able to get things going. Cause that's all I've got right now is myself and three other people who are coming to the church and helping me get this going. So I just, I, you know, I don't, I don't have the big soundboard and two cameras and you know, all this stuff going. So need a little direction. Thank you. Yeah, well, I, I, as I was surfing at various worship services on Sunday, you know, I was touched by a lot of the smaller churches that have smaller crowds. They were taking prayer petitions right there on uh, live for people to be typing down in the memo. And so people hearing their name being, being shared in that prayer petition, you know, if you have hundreds of people watching, you know, that's much harder to do. But these smaller churches, they're, they're taking personal prayer petitions. And so I, I put my prayer petition, I put it in the comment, and then I hear it right, I, uh, I heard Royce Spore say it right back. And, and so um, there are ways that the smaller churches are able to, to build connection in the way that the, um, uh, in, in unique ways. So other ideas? I know some really small churches are using Google Voice so that, if, especially if you're not techno savvy and people won't even do Zoom, you can set up a conference call on Google Voice and all of your more elderly members without a, a laptop can call that number and all talk to each other and do worship together with their landline phones. So, and I'll, just some notes I made uh, from this past Sunday. Um, uh, make sure you're continually encouraging people to register. And so register their attendance at the beginning of it and, and, and within it. So that way you're able to connect with people. They can do that in the comments. Some churches are having landing pages on their, on their website uh, so that they're able to follow up and connect, especially with first time guests and being able to capture those first time guests. Hold on a second. Um, the other is on comments on Facebook, uh, White Rock pinned a comment that would appear first, which would be give online. Uh, and so if you're sitting there watching it, uh, the number one comment that's pinned is the link to giving online. Um, if you haven't edited your, your website so that your online worship is where, where it lands. So as soon as somebody puts in, yourchurch.org, um, where your live stream is happening, would be an ideal place for the, uh, the landing page. Um, and, and open up new Facebook pages are free. And so if you wanna do a, uh, you know, a page for a Sunday school class, a page for, um, for, your, for your church or so forth and invite friends, it's a, just a different form when you connect people. And so those are just some things I noticed on on Sunday and, and picked up on. Other, other things that people wanna be sharing before we start uh, wrapping things up are any questions of our presenters.
Our eldest Sunday school group said, everyone get on your email at this time. And they just did a reply all Sunday school class, which never would have occurred to me. <laughs> and so I applaud their ingenuity in that and that's working for them. <laughs> that's fantastic. Others, questions, um, comments? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, welcome back to <laughs> Hello, sorry. I think everybody's working at home for the internet, so it's real choppy here in Chicago. Um, we're talking about the smaller churches, and um, I, I think a lot of the big hurdles, especially with um, older people like my parents, um, is that they're not on social media. And there's also a lot of uh, millennials that are also like steering away from social media. So that's been a hurdle with us in um, how they can access it. So what we're doing is um, the live stream. I put a link to it to our, our, face, our website, which allows people who don't, and our Facebook is open, so people can just click into our, our website. It'll take them to our Facebook live stream, and at least they're able to watch it live. But I also then put it there um, after we've recorded it. And, it, and also what I've done is then I, I send a weekly MailChimp. Uh, MailChimp is a website that you can do like a newsletter and send out with, you know, images. There's all, I put images and each image has a link to different things. So I do a Google Doc, very simple Google Doc with a YouTube uh, video of a lesson for the kids with songs. I add, you know, um, children's bulletin printouts and a couple of uh, home ideas that if the kids that don't have internet or not internet access, but a printer at home. So I try to implement things that they don't necessarily have to print either, but they can watch on, on an iPhone or they can watch it um, on their computer for as a lesson. And so I, I integrate those into the mail, into the newsletter. Um, and it allows people who don't have access to social media to be able to be a part of and also have quick links to access those things. So I don't know if that um, helps with that. Um, also, some people, some churches, my, uh, my home church in Texas, and it's a smaller church, so they will pre-record the service on YouTube and also, you know, send it through MailChimp for those who don't have um, are not on social media, but also then throw it into uh, Facebook on Sunday so people can see that pre-recorded um, message. Thanks, Denise. That's 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 all very helpful stuff. Do you also have a recommendation that people have been asking, what's the best way to send a big file? Like if I wanted to email a big file out to um, the church members of a, of a message or something like that, uh, uh, do you have a recommendation, Denise, or others? We use wetransfer.com at Discipleship Ministries. It's free, and you can send a ton of documents. If you're using MailChimp, you can upload the document to MailChimp and then include it as a uh, link in your email so that you're not actually emailing the document around, but simply a link to the uh, uploaded document. Very good. You should always flatten a PDF though, especially if it has images in it. When you save it, uh, choose reduce file size. Helpful, helpful. Others, questions, ideas, suggestions? Well, hearing none, it's been great to see all of y'all. I thank our, all our presenters. I'm scrolling through and seeing a number of you and just thankful for this. I'm thankful for, uh, for Matt Temple for curating this, for, for getting us our guest, uh, the work of uh, Liliana, and she's been working behind the scenes. And, and for all our presenters and all of you for joining, just appreciate what you're doing. And I've, as y'all know, I've gotten around to a lot of the churches physically and since since starting this job, but I am loving being able to go to so many churches on a Sunday online and being being connected with you. And you know, I've loved the meme. And like that, we were all televangelists and and 
the way that the North Texas Conference are pastors are adapting, I've just been highly impressed and just and and just thankful for the way that y'all are continuing to ministering to your congregation and the way you're reaching new people uh, that are that are tuning in and, and connecting. I can you know as the Lord works in all things, doesn't cause all things, but works in all things. I can see the Lord working in in this and working in and through y'all. And so I know you're in our prayers and we're gonna to continue to have connection. One question I wanted to raise before we um, before we get off. So we've, the North Texas Conference, we've tried to just stack a lot of information uh, this week with lots of Zoom meetings and so forth, but we were kind of the mindset that next week, Holy Week, we would back off. Now, but I don't wanna assume that. We, would you like us to continue having uh, Zoom meetings during Holy Week? And of course, these are all optional meetings, but um, I guess I can just get some head nods up or down whether to do Zoom meetings next week or not. <laughs> I'm getting a variety of, of responses. <laughs> all right, well, we may do one, and, um, and um, there's a lot of questions on giving, and fundraising and financing and so forth. So we may look at doing one of those next week. If you have also specific questions or ideas, please send them our way. Um, I'm gonna ask Reverend S. Diana Masters to close us in worship, but before I do, I'll, I'll give one last chance if somebody wants to ask something or say something or share something. Well, Owen, I was, I was thinking um, probably not next week, but maybe the week after maybe doing a Zoom where we can get some conversation around what discipleship looks like outside of Sunday mornings in a faith community, um, sort of in a digital space, as well as evangelism, how we might use social media and um, digital spaces to reach people in our community and what that might look like. So we'll, we'll have some conversation about that, but if that's something y'all would be interested, let me know and uh, we, can, we can put some, uh, some uh, resources together for that as well, so. Thanks, Matt. Well, again, thanks to uh, uh, Rachel, uh, Denise, Kyle, Justin, uh, and all those who uh, presented and participated, all the chats. We really did uh, appreciate all of you. And so with that, uh, Reverend Masters, will you close us? You're gonna have to take mute off your, uh, the Lord will hear you even if you're on mute, but uh, the rest of us will not. <laughs> thanks for that reminder, Owen. Yeah, let us pray. Oh God, thank you for this precious time that we've had online to see the faces of our brothers and sisters, just to be reminded that we're all in this together and supporting each other, oh God, with you being the head of our lives. We thank you for all of our speakers who so willingly have given of their time. We ask you to pour back into them all that they have poured into us. Bless them with a special blessing because of their service to us today. Continue to use us, oh God, and let us continue to think out of the box and reach out to those that may not even come into the four walls of our church. Let us go out and be your disciple and share the love of Christ everywhere that we go, even virtually. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for what you're doing. God bless you. Thanks, y'all. Have a great afternoon.